interestingly, there's both more work for the surgeons and less. So uh, yeah. the recent New England Journal article from Mark Ferries, which was on the results of MSLT2, so has that impacted on practice uh, in your hospital, Rhino? Yeah, absolutely. So the first conclusion for us was that really mic microscopic disease, so below a tumor burden of uh, one millimeter and less, that these patients definitely don't go for lymph uh, adenectomy anymore. They get a more closer follow-up with more ultrasounds, but this, is, this has been changed, so this has reduced uh, the, the surgical uh, approach by approximately 60, 70 percent. Wow. Because we had a lot of very low tumors, tumor burden in the sentinel nodes. Uh, and actually for the other patients with, a, with a more involvement, we do it to complete the staging. Because if you don't do it, then you, don't, uh, are not, uh, you have no information about the status of the other nodes. And uh, unfortunately, a number of clinical trials really want to know that. So we do it for the sake of a clinical trial. And this is obviously not the right way. So we have to be aware that, that we need data on patients that are not uh, uh, um, not go, go the, to the full surgery program. So if someone had more than a millimeter, you would advocate the completion lymphadenectomy? Well, this, was, uh, this is our strategy because we want to know what, uh, whether he would, for example, fit in an adjuvant clinical trial that okay. was asking for that, for this status. And obviously the ongoing trials have to be adapted now, though the, the lymphadenectomy should not be uh, mandatory for the inclusion in clinical trials. I, I think the new BMS adjuvant trials in Checkmate 915, which is now Ipinevo versus Nevo alone, I think does not mandate, unless I'm wrong, I don't think it mandates a completion lymphadenectomy. So it might be the first adjuvant trial to recognize and acknowledge the results of MSLT2. So Axel, in your hospital, do you routinely do a lymphadenectomy in anyone with a positive sentinel node, or has, has the practice evolved? Yeah, I, I found your question very interesting, simply because the Germans changed the guideline two years ago. I just need to mention, uh, Jeff, maybe you have forgotten it, that there was a trial, it was exactly the same clinical trial oh. design done by Germans, but the number of patients was not convincing enough for very many U.S. physicians, including the surgical oncologist from the U.S. So when this was presented at ASCO and subsequently published in Lancet Oncology, Ulrike Leiter, who was uh, uh, the first order, has been criticized heavily uh, because it was underpowered. But it found exactly the same what the MSLT2 confirmed now with more than tripled the number of patients, you know, with more than 1,500 patients. And we changed the guideline two years ago. So we are doing exactly the Zurich scheme, you know. Less than one millimeter, I think nobody is uh, recommending a complete lymphadenectomy in cellular node positive patients. But for the more than one millimeter, we were saying in our guideline, it needs to be carefully discussed with the patient. And now that the data are confirming the German first clinical trial, you know, I think we, we need to have a very careful discussion. We shouldn't forget, and the MSLT2 was a proportion of 18% of patients who had non-central node being positive, which means lymph node metastasis in non-central nodes, which were only found with a completion of lymphadenectomy. Since we are doing the lymph node ultrasound approach, we hope that we can pick them up, you know, prior to the complete lymphadenectomy, although, but we are not sure. Although I assume the consensus is that that likelihood of a non-sentinel node being positive directly relates to the burden of tumor in the sentinel node. Exactly. And so you can eliminate most of them by, uh, by stratifying picking, and picking and choosing. By picking the right patients yeah. with high tumor load. Those mm -hmm. was extra capsular spread, very high tumor load. And you know, honestly, um, I, I think there might be a subgroup of patients who still have a benefit. But you know, once you have a strong adjuvant drug, you know, you can discuss of this very small proportion of patients needs a complete lymphadenectomy with all the sequelae, which means lymph edema for the rest of your life, particularly on the legs, if this is groin lymph nodes who are involved, and so on, you know, mm. and therefore, you know, the data here at ESMO is convincing me that the role of the surgeon is a little weaker than ever before. And well, I'm telling in, my in patients, Jeff, I'm telling my patients. In the stage three patient, perhaps, but in the stage four patient, I I'm, think there'll I'm, be more I'm, business. No, no, I'm talking about stage three mm. patients yeah, now. Yeah. So tell us about... asking on MSLT2, this was just in stage three patients. I wanted to say that I tell my patients since a couple of years, it's not the surgeon curing you, it's the biology of your disease, killing you or curing you. 
So it's not the surgical approach alone which is making the job, it's, you know, it's a biology of the disease. Yeah.